Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the top 5 V Premium decks for Worlds. Worlds is in two weeks time. So we're going to go through the top 5 most popular decks and probably the decks that you'll see at, you know, your tables if you are a World Finalist. And if you're watching from home, these are the decks that you'll see on stream. If you guys need any coaching, my link is in the bottom right hand corner. Feel free to book a session and we can get started on your Spring Fest season. If you guys haven't already, click that subscribe button for all notifications on this channel. So the first most probably the best deck in V Premium at the moment is Gurgwit. Now it's funny because it's come, I guess, a circle round again. Gurgwit used to be the best deck with Percival and now without Percival. And I guess with the new VPR, this deck is pretty crazy. And the reason why this deck is so good is that it kind of fills a gap that Gurgit was missing. And that is essentially getting rid of all of your uh, weaker guards to essentially fulfill the same role as something like Max Lash, right? Previously, you had to run like Sagramor. You had to run uh, ways to be able to chain units. But now with the VPR, you can get rid of, I guess, other units that you don't really need anymore. Um, well, the Sagramors, right? And then chain attack using this card instead. This means that, you know, you can run lower costs, well, lower counts of Max Slash Dragon and kind of have um, a bit more flex slots in the deck so that you can kind of run, um, you know, bits and bobs. And obviously, like, as you can see, this engine ray runs the, um, the Ezel jump. Um, so yeah, like, just little things like that. And I guess, like, with, with this particular deck, I think it's, it's, it's just better, right? It's just better than what it was before and Gurgit is just a really, really strong deck. And I guess the main game plan and how Gurgit wins um, hasn't really changed. It just got more consistent and much better with the new VPR. So I think Gurgit is the deck to look out for and I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be on this deck. Um, but obviously, there are other decks, such as Ange. Ange is a pretty fan favorite, I gotta say. Uh, the VPR, again, a very big card in this deck. And the reason why is that uh, Jermaine essentially gives you access to Lot and Aqua. And why, why is that important is that now your early game is so much more stable. Uh, and you're pretty much just outputting a lot of aggression from the get-go, right? You're bashing two lines, three lines, pretty much from grade two onwards, and it's just really, really strong. You just like, you know, bring everything back with Ange, and it's just really, really strong, right? And the deck ha has the same finishing power as it did before, um, but the one problem that Ange had previously was that it couldn't finish because it was always like one damage off or whatever, but with the VPR, the the power in the early game has amped up which means that the one or two cards your opponent would usually wouldn't guard in the early game they kind of have to guard now which means that they can't use that for later on your kill turn right so i think you know Anj is a very very strong pick it's very very consistent um, i guess the only thing is is like you draw your Anj, you're good uh, if you draw Tura, then I guess it's not too bad. Uh, but then again, you know, you still have access to your Pearl Sisters. Minotaur is not banned in this format. And you have Lisa Lot Aqua. You literally have the whole package to play an early in. So I think Arch is very, very strong. Uh, a very strong contender for Worlds and potentially could win Worlds. And I mean, that's why the champion promo is Arch, right? So yeah, I think Arch is a very formidable deck for Worlds. Then the third one is Night Rose. And I think Grand Blue as a whole is a big fan favorite. Everyone loves Grand Blue. Lots of people love Grand Blue. And, you know, the deck is really good now. With the VPR, you're essentially getting four ghost ship attacks for essentially no very little cost, right? Your CB wanting for this, your CB wanting for Night Rose. Uh, you have Jesse to counter charge, and yeah, the deck is just really, really good. If you're playing Cutlass, you have resource forever. 
um, and pretty much, you know, your game plan is still going to be four Skull Dragon attacks, and not a lot of decks can deal with that, especially if, you know, you're forcing out PGs, you hit crits, you put crits on Dragon, and then you just keep bashing, like, this deck is really, really strong, right? And I think, you know, if you're going to Worlds, Grand Blue is probably one of the picks, you know, you should consider. Like, if you ask me, if I was playing V Premium, I would 100% be playing Grand Blue. One, I haven't topped with it. And two, I think the deck is super consistent. Like, I think it's the one, one of the only decks that essentially can fish your grade three without needing to worry, right? You Columbard, you drop a greed, like you drop Night Rose or whatever, uh, call something else out, you know, you Greed Shade, and then you drop, you grab your Night Rose back, and then voila, you have your grade three, right? Um, you obviously still run like Tommy the Ghosty, you still run Navigators, and yeah, it's just really, really strong, right? Very, very consistent deck, and you know, consistency is what you want at Worlds, right? You don't want to run, you know, Gurgut and ride your one Ezel, or you know, your, I don't know, your Max Slash Dragon, you don't want to, you know, run Anj and run Tira, you know? Consistency is key at Worlds, especially if you're going through 7-8 rounds, I think the deck is very, very strong. Then, the next deck is Luard. So Luard's power ceiling, well, power ranking, so to say, has actually dropped. So I think the last one we saw um, that did well, meaning like top four and above, was actually in Indonesia. And I think this deck, it needs to be piloted by someone who really knows the ins and outs of Luard into the metagame, right? So pure example is that you can kind of restrict your opponent in a way where you know you're eating at their resource just turn after turn after turn um, by essentially choking them right and the the i guess the gameplay in that is what makes Lord good into a lot of these decks which require cb right and i think this is why it's so emphasized that night rose is actually very very good because it doesn't care about resources right literally has everything has a counter charge engine you can't damage choke it uh it's gonna get five attacks on you it has never bone you literally just need cards in your hand and then that's it right you have pgs you have a bunch of crits you have pretty much everything right so which is why like, i think luard in in the right hands will do well right and i think you know if you're bringing luard you have to be knowing like every single route knowing when to damage choke your opponent you need to know pretty much the matchup into everything well i guess not to say that you know every other deck needs it um but you need to know like the little micro decisions which makes your deck you know outperform another deck right you know luard's deck hasn't actually changed at all right you're not running vprs in this deck uh, the deck literally is how it was since Ildana came out in Clan Collection, right? So the deck still as it is, whereas the other three got slightly new additions, which really bumps the consistency uh, in all of those decks. So yeah, I think Luard is still a very good pick. And then the last one for the top five is Thavos. So Thavos was really good in, at the start of the season. Right, everyone was on Thavas, um, and then you know, th things happened. You know, VPR got released, and then obviously now everyone's on Gurgen, right? Uh, Thavas is actually not bad, right? It is a little bit annoying, especially if you're playing into Gurgut, because then it becomes you know, rock, paper, scissors. I hope I win the dice roll, and you go first, right? Thavas has always had that problem, and unfortunately, it's just how it is, right? Thavas going second just feels really bad, and yeah, it just doesn't feel great. But the output of offense and defense, the moment you get to grade three, is really, really good, right? You have a finisher in Genovius, you have your consistency in Riptide Dragon, uh, well, sorry, uh, Repressed Strike Dragon, um, and then, like, you know, you still have your Coral Souls, your Narissas. Um, your Pursuit Assault, the best PR probably ever released, um, well, for Aqua Force at least. And pretty much everything else is just like really, really good, right? So I think, you know, Bringing Thavas is still a deck that is very strong. This fifth slot is very 
up in the air because there's actually a lot of other decks that can kind of go into this fifth slot. So for example, Leopold can go there. Uh, Jewel Knights can go there. Uh, there is also Steam Maiden. And the reason why I, place, uh, I pick Steam Maiden is that there's a lot of people who have top with Steam Maiden and generally those people who are, you know, who qualify with the deck that they like, they generally take it, right? And then a very odd pick that I would probably put in the same slot would be like Astral Pollet. Astral Pollet, sometimes you could just bring the deck, have a really, really, really good day, and it just slaughter your opponent, right? There is literally nothing that your opponent can do, right? Um, so yeah, like the first two, Leopold, obviously, you know, it's a deck that is very, very strong, very, uh, not very consistent, I, I'd say. Uh, you know, you're running like 11 threes. So you have to hit your one Leopold reverse, otherwise you're screwed. Um, but pretty much when you get everything rolling, like I did in Springfest, you know, like you just roll your opponent, hit double front and call it a day, right? Um, and then Jewel Knights, you know, again, very, very straightforward, consistent deck. Sometimes, you know, you lock everything and then, you know, force two with crit, with guard restrict and your opponent literally cannot do anything, right? But I think these are the five that really define V Premium at the moment. And these are the, probably the big five that you will look out for um, at Worlds. So I'll put in a last deck um, as a fifth, fifth option. And that is Glendios. Um, and I think Glendios is actually very strong into this format. And the reason being is that Gl Glendios with Chaos like rips apart Gurgut. Like, the Chaos component means that Gurgut can't multi-attack or generate, you know, that big kill turn, you know, as quick as they usually would, right? If you look at Arch, you lock their two front row, that, that that's it, right? Same with Luar, you lock their two front row, that's it, right? Night Rose, this is the only deck that has zero prob well not zero but very little problems with chaos because it essentially just gets rid of their board and you just have to draw your zirconiums and if you do the first slot that they put it in is behind the vanguard right so it's like whatever and then pretty much after attack they just get rid of themselves and you can't lock the front row right so again grand blue a very good deck to go into the premium worlds and you know people who recognize how good this deck is Know, bring it so yeah though those were my five um i guess power ranking decks for bcs v premium so going first again is gurgit then Ange, uh grand blue luard and Thalvis. mix a bit with you know some of the other stuff that i mentioned like leopold jewel knights uh glendios and a few others so i think these are the big five that people have to look out for astral pulse as well um, so yeah, this is pretty much what you expect to see at BCS World. So if you guys are playing in V, this is pretty much the landscape. So hopefully you guys are testing well enough into at least these five decks. Um, and then hopefully, you know, cruise your way through BCS V Premium Worlds in two weeks time. And that is pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, pop a like, comment down below what you guys think of the V Premium format at the moment. What are you guys excited to see on the world stream in two weeks time? If you guys haven't already, click that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.